Welcome back to my battle map tutorial series. Today we are going to be talking about castle walls, um, creating castle gatehouses, towers, and walls. Um, first video we'll cover the castle gatehouses. That's one of the easier ones to do. Though castle walls are probably just as easy, but I find the gatehouses a bit more easier. So again, we're going to create a what I call a prefab tower. Um, as you can see, I've got uh, everything in a group so I can easily drag that over to another image. I also have the different layers um, that I can do and the reason I like to keep the layers different is because I can simply add a new texture background and basically get a whole new tower um, of a different stone build. So that's why I like it. So let's get started. Control N for a new image. Uh, I'm gonna create my tower 400 by 400 pixels. Um, the size of the tower you create is up to you. It also depends upon your scale. I use 50 pixels per five foot square. So this is a 40 foot by 40 foot tower. Um, next thing is, let's get rid of this background. So we'll create a new layer, delete our background color. We don't like background colors. And then we gotta go get our stone tile. And so again, as I mentioned in my art assets uh, tutorial, Dungeony stone tile will bring up lots of different stone tiles. The nice thing about these is they are seamless in most cases, so you can easily create patterns out of them. Another place you can just go to Google and type stone wall texture. Uh, and again, as you can see, lots of different tiles. Here's some nice tiles for a uh, desert castle or something like that. Um, and my latest source that I've been using is textures.com. You sign up for free, doesn't require a credit card, only an email address. You get 15 credits a day and basically which allows you to download up to about 15 images a day. The other nice thing is is that you can they have a link on all their pages called show seamless textures and you click that and basically these are all seamless which are really nice to be defined as patterns. So again just you can click that that's a nice one. But if you scroll down a little bit you'll see this texture down here which is basically if you go back to my uh, castle it's the texture I used for my stonework and again it's seamless you just click on that, download that, and create a pattern. I'm not going to go into how to create a pattern. You can find enough tutorials on that online. So we're going to go to our fill brush and select pattern for the fill type. And obviously I've already got the uh, tile selected, but you can see I have other tiles and stoneworks as well. I've got lots of them. Been collecting for a while. Now first thing you do is when you paste that or define it as a pattern, you're like, oh wow, that's way too big compared to what our scale is. So we need to scale that pattern. So what I do is I create a new image. I'll usually start with 6,000 by 6,000 uh, as my default, depending on the resolution of the image. Um, I've gone up to as high as 20,000. Actually, I think I might have done one at 40,000. Um, and then you go from there. So here you'll notice we see some banding or artifacts. When you zoom in, you really don't notice those, so don't worry too much about those. We're just going to grab that new layer and bring it over here. And again, you can see it still hasn't scaled anything. Let's get rid of our old layer. Um, but what we want to do is now rescale that. So control T. Now when you control T resize, it's going to resize either to the center or to the side or to the corner, depending upon where you select actually. Um, so if you don't readjust this and you rescale it, your image is going to end up down here and you're not going to have anything on your screen. So what I usually like to do is either drag it to the center or the edge, depending, whichever. And then if I drag it to the corner, I just hit that. Okay, next thing is we want to get back so we can actually see the scaling. And then so control T and we're going to set it to the corner so it rescales to this corner. I want my width and height locked and we're going to start with 75%. And that's not bad. We could go with that. But again, it's your taste, your preferences. I'm going to scale it down just a little bit more, 65% and hit enter and that will resize it. Now the problem is, is right now, this image is very large, or this layer is very large, which is gonna increase your file size. So what you wanna do is just select all, Control A, and Control C or Control X, whichever, to make a copy of that, and then let's delete that original layer. So now, basically, my image is the size of here. The other thing I like to do, and you don't have to do this, is I like a little white border around the edge uh, so I can see it. So. I'm gonna increase my canvas size by five pixels on all sides. So that's 410 by 410. And now I have a nice little border. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create these edge shadows, as you can see here. 
So go back to our original image, select the layer. We're going to create a new layer. Uh, so we've got our dancing ants, and we're just going to simply fill that, okay, with black. So again, fill. Instead of pattern this time, we're going to go foreground color. Fill nice black. There we go. Now we're going to modify our selection, contract, and this will depend upon your resolution and your preference. I'm going to contract mine by four pixels. And see, now I have a nice, basically, outer edge if I cut that. So if I cut that, and again, we want to paste it back in because we're going to use it. But if right now, if I do that, I've got there. Don't worry about the blackness. We'll take care of that in a second. So next, go back again, select our whole image or our whole layer down there. And make sure you're on this one. We're going to reduce the contraction or contract the selection again. And this time, we're going to basically do the inner wall, inner shadow. And so if you want a five foot wall you can go the scale whatever your dpi is i'm going to go a little bit less i'm going to go 45 and so basically this is going to define this outer wall so we're going to cut that and you can cut that right out and then we're going to go back once more select modify contract and this time i'm going to go a little bit less basically the difference between the outer selection that i did four pixels and uh the inner one so i originally had i had 45 i'm going to go 41 which is four pixels less and you can see I've got basically a little line. And then basically copy that or cut and paste it, and we can get rid of this line. So again, I have my two lines. Now, obviously, they're black. We don't want black. So we're just going to select that layer. We're going to go outer. Should, it's always good to label your layers. Enter. And we're just going to set the opacity. And this is why I like using black, because you can adjust it if needed um, and go from there. So I'm going to set it around 60%, and I'm going to do the same for this guy. Right around 60%, 60 exactly looks like. And that gives us our outer shadows. Okay, next we're going to do our battlements, which are the uh, other shadows. Oops, we can close that guy. And so we're going to zoom in to a corner. We're going to grab our square marquee tool, select a corner, and you can hold shift to get an exact square. And basically, it should, though, match down to there. We're going to create a new layer. Label that Battlement. Okay. And we're going to fill that, again, with black. See a pattern here? <laughs> and then we're going to contract that. Select, Modify, Contract. And this really depends upon your taste. You could have it go to a pinnacle. Um, or I'm going to just contract it by 10 pixels. And we're going to cut that out. Okay, so again, basically, it looks like that. So again, you can see the differences that I have here. And so then what we're going to do is just shut the opacity there, and we're going to decrease that down. And there we go. So that's, again, that's a little bit lighter than the other one, so about 50%. And that gets us our battlement. So now what you want to do is you want to basically duplicate that layer, okay, and then drag him to the four corners real quickly. And there's the next one, and next one. Oops. There we go. Okay, so there's our four corners. So again, if we, if you zoom out, you got your battlements of the four corners. So now we want to do the inner ones, and it really depends upon your preference. You can either have it centered or you know evenly spaced, um, but basically just again duplicate a corner and now you could probably get the exact pixels here I'm not going to uh, for the tutorial I'm just going to duplicate this twice and drag that and you can adjust them as needed but that actually looks pretty good right there and then I'm going to actually merge that layer down so it's basically one layer and then I'm going to duplicate that layer drag it to the side and so there's there you go so again from a zoomed out point of view, we got that. And I'm going to duplicate that again. And this time I'm going to rotate it, Control T. Rotate it holding the Shift key to get exact degrees. Otherwise, you can, whoops, you can rotate it manually, but if you hold the Shift key, it, it locks it to specific 15, in, 15 degree increments. I'm going to drag that up there and hit Enter. 
and duplicate it once more and drag it down there. So there we go. That's your basic battle tower, as you can see. Now, the last thing I like to do is enter a little bit of an inner shadow. So what you want to do is just select your inner area and you can just go select where's our inner and then just make sure that we have everything in there. Or actually at this point, I could have just selected this layer, selected that and select that. So we're going to create a new layer and let's say floor shadow. And then get your paintbrush and set it to about 26%, uh, 26%, maybe a little bit less again, depending how heavy handed you are. And then we're just going to increase that size a little bit. And we're just going to go along the edges lightly. Probably a little bit more in the corner. Because the corners are getting shadows from both sides. And that's pretty much it. So we'll unselect that. And there we go. So there's our... That one's that shadow is a little bit lighter. This one's a little bit darker. So again, everyone's will be slightly different. Um, you have that. And so what I'll do is I'll usually combine all those battlements. You can always cut and paste them apart in the future. And then I'll take all these and I'll create a group. We call the group tower or a gatehouse. And there we go. And so you also may want to link them. So when you move them. So I can just take this and drag it over here. And basically I have my new tower. Just like that. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. And I'll hopefully have some other ones for the other parts of the castle walls. Thank you.